Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. Sylvia, darling, I missed you so much. Esteban touched her cheek with his lips. Here, look, I brought you a present. He handed her a box of perfume. Wow, he missed me so much that he bought a present at the very last moment, Sylvia thought with a grin. I wonder how he explained it to his mistress. Or did he buy it secretly while she turned away? Or maybe, on the contrary, she helped to choose a present for me and laughed at the naive, stupid wife. Or maybe even worse, he bought the same perfume for me and his mistress. Thank you, the girl nodded demurely. She never really liked strong, spicy fragrances with oriental notes. She preferred something light, soft, and fresh. But her husband's mistress was just such a spicy woman. She'd love this perfume. Sylvia found out about Esteban's cheating by accident. There will always be a well-wisher who will gladly bring you bad news. That's how it happened this time. When the caring, loving wife saw her husband off on a business trip, she received a text message from Zoe, her former classmate. Hey sweetie, is everything okay between you and Castro? Yeah, he just left for Madrid for work. Why do you ask? Sylvia replied in surprise. Cause I'm at the airport right now too and I see Esteban a few meters away from me. Not alone, but with some girl. And I have to admit, she's gorgeous. Sylvia felt an unpleasant chill in her chest. But she immediately tried to find a logical explanation. Maybe she's just his colleague? A colleague, indeed. Zoe replied sarcastically. That's why Esteban gently wraps his arms around her waist and grabs her boobs and her butt. Sylvia felt like she was suffocating. For several agonizing seconds, she gulped for air like a fish pulled out of water. No, it can't be true. It's just not possible. Esteban is not like that. He loves her and doesn't even look at other women. They've been together since high school. He would never do that to her, and he certainly wouldn't lie to her. So, Zoe hurried her up without waiting for an answer. Shall I go up to them and say hello for you? I can imagine their faces at that moment. Or maybe I should just scratch that bitch's eyes out. Or do you want me to tear her hair out? Or would you prefer cold, reasonable revenge and do it yourself when he comes back? Sylvia made one last pathetic attempt to justify her husband's behavior. I don't think it's what it looks like. Oh, Sylvia, you're either naive or stupid, Zoe said indignantly. But if you like living in a world of illusions, that's fine. Just take care of your eyes. Why? Sylvia didn't understand. When the rose-colored glasses shatter, you can hurt yourself, Zoe said bluntly. For a few moments, Sylvia stayed in a strange daze, clutching her cell phone in her hand. Her first instinct was to call her husband and ask him where he was, who he was with, and why. But she realized that Esteban could tell her anything on the phone. He could have lied to her, and she had no proof. She has to act like everything is fine like she doesn't know anything. She has to act smart wait until his business trip was over. Was it even a business trip? Maybe he told her he was going to Madrid for work, but he just decided to spend the weekend with his mistress. The phone vibrated, receiving a new message. Sylvia shuddered and tensed, subconsciously expecting something bad. Her fears were confirmed. Zoe had sent a few pictures, accompanied by a snide comment. It's not hard to lie to you, because you're happy to live a lie. Zoe hinted that Sylvia was blind and didn't want to see the truth. All the pictures showed Esteban with an incredibly beautiful young girl, big breasts, slim waist, magnificent hips, Beautiful black hair that spread over her shoulders in a thick silk waterfall, red lips, and almond-shaped black eyes with long expressive lashes. Even in the photos that were taken sneakily from the side, it was obvious that the girl was not just impressive, she was incredibly gorgeous. Damn, she looked flawless, like a Disney princess. Sylvia had never had such a slim waist and curvy hips, such long eyelashes, and marvelous hair. But that wasn't even the most unbearable part. What hurt Sylvia the most was the way her husband looked at this princess. 
That mesmerizingly amorous gaze could not be interpreted in two ways. It was obvious that he was truly in love with her. Esteban's behavior clearly indicated that there was a romantic relationship between him and this beauty. He put one arm around her waist and touched her hair with the other looking her in the eyes. Damn, where did that poisonous snake even come from? And how long has it been going on? Sylvia felt like she was going to die of heartache. There was no more coldness in her chest. It was as if a thunderstorm was raging inside her and everything was burning with fire. She wished she could cry, but there were no tears. What should she do now? How do people behave when their whole life collapses in an instant? What do women do when they find out about cheating? Do they rush to jump off a bridge into a river? No, it's not worth it. She has to do something about it. She must have her revenge. What do women do when they find out about cheating? Do they rush to jump off a bridge into a river? No, it's not worth it. But what can she do? The solution came unexpectedly. Revenge. Sylvia should make Esteban feel the same pain she was feeling now. She would not let him see her pathetic, humiliated, and broken. In his eyes, she must look like the beautiful, confident, attractive, and desirable woman he lost because of his own stupidity. He'll regret it. He will crawl on his knees and beg for her forgiveness. And she will watch him humiliate himself, enjoy this pathetic spectacle, and then walk away satisfied with sweet revenge. She'd come up with a plan the only thing left to do was to urgently find a handsome lover in a couple of days. But it turned out that planning revenge was easier than executing it. First, Sylvia went through all her acquaintances in her head, starting almost from kindergarten. Unfortunately, none of them were suitable for the role of a lover. Esteban knew many of them in person, some of them were married and had children, and they would hardly agree to help her. And everyone else didn't look good enough to pretend to be the lover of a young, beautiful woman. For example, Uncle David, the plumber, would have agreed to play this role for a bottle of beer, but he's just not right for this role. Esteban has a hot, gorgeous mistress. So, Sylvia needs such a lover so that Esteban will definitely believe in their relationship and become jealous. He has to suffer. Maybe hire a stripper. No, that's stupid and probably very expensive. Sylvia didn't know whether to cry or laugh. She couldn't believe she was serious about hiring a stripper. As luck would have it, there were no painkillers at home, so, grimacing with pain in her temples, Sylvia got dressed and went to the pharmacy. There was a group of bums sitting near the entrance to the store. They were drinking some strange booze and eating bread and pickles. Sylvia held her breath because the bum stank disgusting and was going to quickly enter the building. But one of them suddenly called out to her. Hey, sweetheart, would you like to join us? We've got booze and snacks, and we'll guarantee you a pleasant company. In response to this ingenious joke, all his buddies laughed loudly. Some of them even started hiccuping with laughter. Sylvia pursed her lips in disgust and turned around to scold that man. She was about to say something harsh, humiliating, insulting, but suddenly she saw his deep piercing blue eyes and hesitated. This homeless man looked cleaner than his companions and clearly younger than them. He was about the same age as Sylvia. His tangled blonde hair needed a hairbrush and his clothes needed washing, but he still looked like a normal person, unlike the others, the stinking, unwashed, toothless, constantly drunk guys. Can't you see that she finds you disgusting? She must be a high society lady. Do you think she will pay attention to you? Don't get your hopes up. The friends attacked the man who addressed Silvio with an invitation. Am I not good enough? He said. Women always paid attention to me. I was surrounded by their love. Three hundred years ago, the others chuckled. Sylvia glanced at the guy again and noticed that he wasn't laughing, unlike everyone else. He just remained silent and kept looking at her intently. For some reason, that look gave her goosebumps, making her want to shiver and wrap her arms around herself. So, beautiful lady, the cheerful homeless man, who was surrounded by women's love, gallantly stretched out his dirty hand to her, sit down. If you're afraid of catching a cold, you can sit on my lap, I'll warm you up. 
and there was another burst of laughter. Sylvia felt dizzy. All the sarcastic words she wanted to tell him had vanished from her mind. She felt sick barely able to stand on her feet. Are you all right? The young homeless man immediately stood up and rushed over to the girl to prevent her from falling, but he didn't dare to approach her, stopping at a respectful distance, obviously ready to help at any second. Shall I walk you home? Sylvia had already come to her senses. She felt embarrassed for her weakness, and then she remembered the pictures of Esteban with his mistress. She straightened up sharply and gave the bum a hateful look. No, you don't have to walk me home. Just leave me alone. The guy suddenly smiled. The smile was surprisingly pleasant and bright and his teeth were perfectly white. It was the first time Sylvia had seen a homeless man with perfect teeth. His smile was almost like the smile of Hollywood celebrities. And in general, he was different from the others, a white crow among the bums. But we're not trying to stop you, you're free to go. But you're the one who approached us, he grinned in response to her demand. Sylvia blushed, feeling like an idiot. She really did approach this cheerful company herself. She could have just passed by without reacting to the provocation. Instead, she'd stopped to give a lecture on manners, and now she was getting indignant and looking like an idiot. Excuse us, the guy put his hand to his heart in a dramatic way. We really didn't mean to scare or offend you. We're just in a good mood. Fernando made a lot of money today, so we decided to celebrate it. Sylvia looked at the treats and drinks with disgust. Aren't you ashamed? She said with unexpected bitterness, addressing the guy. Why should I be ashamed? He was sincerely surprised. You are young, healthy, and strong. You have hands and feet. You should find a job, but instead, you are begging for alms. The guy's face turned red. It seems that she managed to hurt him. Well, first of all, I'm not begging, he began seriously, I'm always trying to get some job and every day I manage to earn some money for food and I never ask for alms. Secondly, you never know why this or that person ended up homeless. Often, it is not their fault that they ended up on the street. Someone had to sell their apartment because of debts, someone was released from prison, and someone came from another city and lost their family. How can you even judge everyone like that? You know nothing about our fates. Sylvia suddenly froze, catching on to the words, I'm always trying to get some job. The idea that came into her head was completely wild and crazy, but... She looked at the guy from head to toe again, and he even got nervous under her evaluative gaze. What do you do for a living? She finally asked. The guy shrugged. Well, temporary janitors and cleaners are always in demand, or loaders, or anything else. And do they pay much? Not that much, but enough to buy bread, sometimes even with butter. Sylvia squeezed her eyes shut as if she were about to jump in the water. Perhaps it was stupid, and she would regret it later, but... She pulled herself together and finally said, Would you like to work for me? It's just a couple of hours' work, but I'll pay you $3,000. It's enough not only to buy bread and butter, but also enough for cheese and sausage and maybe even caviar. Come to my house tomorrow. I'll give you the address. What do I have to do? The guy looked at her suspiciously. You have to pretend to be my lover, she whispered in his ear. Of course, she cursed herself with the worst words as soon as the guy crossed the threshold of her house. At one point, she even got scared and wanted to give up her plan and ask the guy to leave. He felt uncomfortable, too, standing in the hallway and looking around, expecting some kind of trouble. Sylvia took 3000 out of her purse and waved it in front of the guy's nose. Here, your money. I'm not going to trick you. If you do it right, I'll pay you right away. I will do everything right, he said uncertainly. So, where do we start? Will you show me where your bedroom is? No way. Sylvia replied indignantly first. We need to make you look normal. Why? The guy looked in the mirror hanging on the wall. I think I'm pretty good. You certainly don't lack confidence. Sylvia shook her head. First, go to the shower. Did you bring the lice and scabies remedy like I said? 
I told you, I don't have lice, and I don't have scabies, and I don't have any other diseases. Shall I bring you a medical certificate from the hospital? That would be helpful, Sylvia sighed. Why should I believe you? Anyway, let's go. I'll give you clean underwear and a towel. And put your old clothes in a bag and leave them on the floor. Are you really going to wash them? The guy was curious. Hell no. I'm sorry, but I'm going to throw these rags away. Seriously? He was indignant. What am I going to wear later? Calm down, I'll give you clean clothes and shoes. Your husband's old clothes? No, Sylvia turned away trying to hold back her tears. She thought of that damn pictures, and her heart ached as if it had been stabbed with a knife. Don't worry, I bought new clothes for you. In the bathroom, trying to hide her embarrassment, she hurriedly pulled out shampoos, shaving foam, shower gel, and robes. The hot water turns on like this and the cold water like this, she showed him. The boy felt deeply offended again. Do you think I'm some kind of jumble animal? For a bum, you're a little too sensitive, Sylvia said mockingly, your ego is off the charts. Why do you treat me like some kind of trash? He looked up at her with clear blue eyes. You wouldn't believe it, but I know how to use a bathtub, a sink, and even a toilet. Okay, sounds good. The girl shook her head in disbelief, still unable to hold back a smile. By the way, what's your name? That's where you should have started, he grumbled, leaning over the bathtub and adjusting the water temperature. I'm Manuel. And I'm Sylvia, she answered in the same tone. After all, lovers are supposed to know each other's names, she joked hysterically. The boy's cheek twitched nervously. He seemed to be seriously afraid that this strange lady would force him to be her sexual slave. Okay, Sylvia, he replied hesitantly and even blushed a little. I think you'd better get out while I wash up. Or do you want to rub my back? The girl came to her senses. Oh, sure, sorry, I'll wait for you in the room. I wouldn't mind eating something too, Manuel winked, turning to her. It's not easy to make love on an empty stomach. Now it was Sylvia's turn to turn to blush. No love making. I told you, you just need to pretend to be my lover, not to be him. Don't worry, I remember. Manuel laughed. But will you feed me? Do you remember fairy tales? First, you should wash a brave knight, then feed him, and then take him to bed. You are a desperate impudent man, do you know that? Sylvia said, looking at him with curiosity. Manuel winked at her. I like dumplings with broth, dill, and mayonnaise. Sylvia, can you hear me? Esteban noticed that something was obviously wrong with his wife. What happened? He asked worriedly. Didn't like my present? The girl shuddered and looked at her husband. No, I like it very much, she smiled and said. But this perfume is more suitable for brunettes. It's too strong and spicy. Do you think I should dye my hair black, Esteban? Esteban blinked confusedly, trying to figure out if there was a hidden message in her question. But when he couldn't find any subtext, he cautiously said, Why? I like your blonde hair very much. Sylvia realized that there was no point in waiting any longer. As if suddenly remembering something, she theatrically slapped her forehead. Oh, I forgot, I have a present for you too. Really? Her husband perked up. You are so sweet and caring. Let's go to the bedroom. Sylvia looked at him intently. The present is there. Esteban's eyes flashed playfully. Intriguing. I like it. Didn't he have enough sexual pleasures with his oriental princess in Madrid? Sylvia thought and, taking her husband by the hand, led him to the room. Esteban, trying to pinch his wife's booty on the way, obediently followed her into the bedroom and there was a shocking surprise waiting for him. In the middle of the spacious marital bed, the young Apollo was lying in a relaxed pose. Manuel looked perfect. Sylvia wondered how this unattractive bum had suddenly become such an antique god. Slender body, muscular legs, and strong arms, wavy dark blonde hair. Manuel was wearing only underwear. Sylvia looked at this guy with different eyes. 
She had to admit, he's really handsome, he's even better than Esteban's mistress. However, judging by Esteban's dumbfounded look, he had forgotten about his oriental beauty at the moment. I don't get it, who is it? He muttered pathetically, clutching his tie with his fingers as if it were suddenly choking him. Manuel was not embarrassed even a little, did not change his relaxed pose, and did not make any attempt to say hello or explain anything. In general, he behaved exactly as Sylvia had instructed him, and she couldn't help but admire his self-control. It seemed that the boy was enjoying the performance, and Esteban's shocked stupid face was his greatest pleasure. Sylvia, could you tell me who is this guy? Her husband shouted like a rooster. What the hell is he doing in our bedroom, on our bed? Sylvia made an innocent grimace. Oh, I simply forgot about him. Esteban, I think you should forgive me for this little weakness. I just couldn't resist such charisma. I'm asking you, who is it? Esteban became even more furious. His face was red with anger, and his forehead was covered with sweat. Don't yell at the woman, Manuel said calmly, even lazily, like a well-fed lazy cat full of homemade whipped cream. After all, she is your wife yet. What do you mean by yet? Esteban got worried. Sylvia, don't be silent, for God's sake. What's going on here? Well, I told you that I have a surprise for you, she smiled, innocently flapping her eyelashes. Didn't you like it? I think he's very, very handsome. What the hell is going on here? What are you doing? Her husband cried out, nearly with steam coming out of his ears. Why the hell did you bring this guy into our bed? Oh, so the only problem is that he is in our bed? All right, Sylvia agreed and nodded obediently. Next time I'll meet him on neutral territory, somewhere in a hotel, let's say in Madrid. His face slowly turned from red to nervously pale. Madrid? What does Madrid have to do with it? He said uncertainly in a husky voice. Well, they say the best place to relax with lovers during this season is Madrid. Sylvia sent him the sweetest smile. In fact, right now she felt a kind of dark, malicious satisfaction at what was happening. At first, she thought that she would not be able to take such cynical revenge on her husband, that she would feel ashamed, disgusted, and hurt. But now, looking at his angry and at the same time confused face, Sylvia felt nothing but squeamishness toward this man. What are you talking about? Esteban was still trying to pretend he didn't know what she was talking about. Sylvia suddenly felt endlessly tired. I know everything, she said with a sigh. I know who you traveled to Madrid with. I'll explain everything. It's not what it looks like, her husband exclaimed a phrase that Sylvia had heard a hundred times in various soap operas and repeatedly read in love novels, and that suddenly made her laugh almost to tears. Esteban, please don't humiliate yourself or me with these silly explanations and excuses, she said through laughter. I'm not an idiot, so stop lying. But it's not serious, I swear, now he looked like a puppy who did something wrong, he looked pathetic. It's just a short-term affair. It happened for the first time, and I don't even know how it started. But she means nothing to me. I only love you, I swear. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you, she nodded. Will you forgive me? Esteban asked hopefully. She'll only forgive you if she's a completely stupid and blind fool. A mocking voice came from the bed. Esteban and Sylvia shuddered simultaneously. Both of them had completely forgotten about the presence of the young half-naked handsome man in the bedroom, and Manuel decided to remind them about himself. Then her husband realized that the best defense is an attack, and he attacked Sylvia with claims. You still haven't explained to me who this guy is. Why did you bring him here? But the girl had already come to her senses and began to mockingly imitate Esteban, trying to make fun of him. It's just a short-term affair. It happened for the first time, and I don't even know how it started. But he means nothing to me. Did you do this deliberately to piss me off? Her husband exhaled noisily. You didn't sleep with him, did you? Where did you even find him? His lips curved squeamishly. At a strip club? 
And how much did you pay him? Manuel glanced questioningly at Sylvia as if asking her, what's next? But he remained silent. Sylvia shook her head and grinned bitterly, looking into her husband's eyes. So do you think I can't have a real lover? Do you think no one can fall in love with me? Do you think a handsome young man would only go to bed with me for money? I don't think he'd go to bed with you out of love, Esteban said, contemptuously. You're wrong, Manuel said. Sylvia is an absolutely amazing woman. She's smart, attractive, and incredibly gorgeous. I'm sorry. But if you've lost such a treasure, you are a total asshole. Lost her? Me? How dare you talk to me that way, bastard? Esteban was shaking with indignation. It's none of your business. Actually, you are wrong again, Manuel interrupted him sternly and got up from the bed not to look at Esteban from below. Sylvia wants to divorce you and marry me. For a few seconds, there was a frightening silence in the room. Sylvia was a little shocked. This was not something she and Manuel had discussed. However, it was even better this way. She didn't show her shock, but stood next to him and rested her head on his shoulder. It's a joke, isn't it? Esteban moaned pathetically. Tell me it's a joke. I want a divorce, she repeated firmly. Esteban was as furious as never before. He was stomping his feet like a crazy elephant, waving his fists in front of Manuel's face, insulting his wife, and cursing. He also threatened that in case of divorce, he would leave Sylvia penniless, that he would hire the best lawyers and she would get nothing. You will be left with nothing. He yelled. You will regret filing for divorce. You will beg me to forgive you and come back. Sylvia looked at him without any anger but with some surprise. She couldn't believe that all these years she had loved this bastard who had cheated on her and was now insulting her. But this was not Esteban she loved, but some aggressive stranger who seemed disgusting to her. Finally, tiring of her future ex-husband's yelling, she whispered quietly to Manuel. Can you get him out of here? He nodded and pushed Esteban out into the hallway. Esteban tried to resist, tried to hit Manuel, yelling that he would make Manuel's life a nightmare. But the guy seemed to be amused by these cries. He swung the door open and kicked Esteban out. The suitcase from the Madrid business trip followed him. You'll both regret it. Esteban cried like a wounded hare. I'll pay for it. He shouted something else about moral damage, but Manuel didn't hear him. He just shut the door. When he returned to the bedroom, Sylvia was sitting on the edge of the bed, hands folded in her lap like a student. She looked confused as if she didn't know what to do, how to behave, or how to get on with her life. Had he left? She asked faintly. Manuel nodded cautiously and hesitantly sat down next to her. Yes. Are you okay? It seems like it's happening to someone else, not to me, Sylvia confessed after a moment's hesitation, a very strange feeling. A few seconds passed in silence. It seemed to the guy that she had forgotten about his presence. Well, Manuel said with a cough, I should probably go. I've done everything you asked. Sylvia focused a distracted gaze on him. What? Oh, yes, sure, she suddenly realized, thank you for your help. You've really helped me out. Honestly, I don't know how to thank you. You've already thanked me. You've paid as we discussed. Manuel got up from the bed, but he still hesitated, shuffling from foot to foot. So you don't need my help anymore? He said one last time before he left. No, thank you. Sylvia shook her head, then suddenly covered her face with her hands and wept. Manuel watched her dazedly for a few seconds, then sat down again and shook her by the shoulders. Hey, why are you so upset? Everything's fine now. Yeah, perfect, Sylvia sobbed painfully, I just lost my husband. Why do you even need such a husband? Manuel said, in sincere bewilderment, he cheats on you, lies to you, threatens you, and said he'd leave you penniless after the divorce. Are you sure you need this noble knight? You don't understand, Sylvia continued sobbing. He and I have been together for ten years. Our relationship started in high school. 
Manuel looked at her puzzled, not knowing what to do to calm her down. How could he stop a woman's tantrums? Should he give her some sedatives? Or maybe slap her? Suddenly, he came up with an idea. Okay, Sylvia, you need a drink right now. Do you have any alcohol in your house, or should I go to the store? Clapping her eyes and sniffing her red, swollen nose, Sylvia stared at him in bewilderment. There is champagne, she said shakily, but I don't think it would be suitable. Why not? Well, champagne is a drink made to celebrate something. That's right, we're going to celebrate, Manuel said confidently. Celebrate what? Your freedom, he announced. An hour later, Manuel already knew every detail of Sylvia and Esteban's high school love story. I was a new girl at school. She was already tipsy. I transferred to this school after the ninth year. Almost all the students at that school had been there since first grade, were best friends, and had known each other since childhood, and I was just a stranger to them. No one wanted to be friends with me, especially the girls. You know, I was very pretty in high school. You're still pretty, Manuel assured her gallantly, pouring more champagne into her glass. Manuel only took a sip, choosing to be a bartender and a friend with whom Sylvia could share her pain and resentment. She laughed incredulously. Still pretty? Yeah. I know you're lying, but thanks for trying to make me feel better. But if that were true, Esteban would never look at anyone else. Seriously, Sylvia, you're really cool, Manuel said sincerely. Okay, she said, frustrated, anyway, that's not what I'm talking about right now. In general, everyone was hostile to me. They avoided me in the cafeteria. At the physical education class, they tried to trip me up. They pushed me when I walked up to the blackboard, and they joked and giggled to confuse me. I was an honor student, and I became the best student in school, and they hated me even more for that. Only Esteban didn't mock me, said hello to me, and even smiled. I liked him right away. All the girls at school were in love with him. He was a smart, straight-A student. Moreover, he was an athlete. What a perfect guy, Manuel said ironically. But Sylvia didn't notice his irony and nodded. Yes, he seemed perfect. Anyway, I never even dared to dream that a boy like Esteban would ever pay attention to me. Oh, Sylvia, you underestimate yourself too much. Manuel shook his head, looking at her seriously. And once after physical education class, I was in the shower, and my classmates decided to play a prank on me and stole my clothes and bag and locked the door from the outside. So, just try to imagine it, I came out of the shower, completely naked, and there's no clothes and no phone to call someone. I was so scared. Sylvia shook her head, smiling at her own old fears. I started banging on the door with my fists, calling for help. I was terrified that they wouldn't hear me or find me, but I was even more afraid that someone would find me, open the door, and see me naked. She smiled embarrassedly. And what happened then? How was the problem resolved? Manuel asked. It turned out that Esteban had also spent more time than usual in the shower that day, and when he came out, he heard my screams and headed to the guard to get the key to the girl's locker room. I hid in a corner, trying to cover my body with my arms, and he assured me that he didn't even look in my direction. He gave me his gym uniform, and I put it on my naked body. The uniform was too big for me, and Esteban carefully rolled up my sleeves. Sylvia smiled at her memories. Anyway, that was the day it all started. He walked me home and asked me out on a date the next day, and we never parted again. Esteban was holding my hand at school, and he didn't hide our relationship from anyone. All the girls were unbelievably furious, but then they accepted it. But I didn't care about them anymore because we were so happy. Sylvia covered her face with her hands again. It seemed to me that there could never be a stronger and better couple than me and Esteban. I don't understand what he was lacking in our relationship. She exclaimed in despair. I thought it was forever, that we would have children, that we would live happily ever after. How could he ruin our relationship and humiliate me in such a disgusting way? Tears streamed through her fingers. 
Manuel took a deep breath and gently removed Sylvia's hands from her face, then began gently wiping her wet cheeks. Don't cry, Sylvia. Yes, you had some wonderful memories, a sweet love story. But life is a very unpredictable thing. You still think that your husband is perfect, but I advise you to hire a good lawyer, otherwise, your precious Esteban will really leave you penniless. Esteban will never do that to me. Sylvia replied uncertainly, everything he said, he said out of anger. He could never do that to me. I think right now he's already planning what he said he was going to do. He's probably already called his lawyer. So don't expect him to be kind and noble. Perhaps years ago he really was a noble man, but now things have changed. Nothing lasts forever. You need to get on with your life and enjoy every day. Enjoy every day. Sylvia grinned bitterly and shook her head. That's very valuable advice from a bum. What else could you possibly say? Manuel looked at her, smiling sadly, as if he wanted to say something, but didn't dare. Do you have a girlfriend? Sylvia asked suddenly. Manuel looked away. I had a girlfriend, but I don't want to talk about it. Why, did she cheat on you, too? Left you for some other bum? Some Roberto or Aurelio? She's a bum too? Where'd you meet her? In some dump? Sylvia, you don't understand anything. He exclaimed, ruffling his thick hair with frustration. I don't understand, and I don't want to understand. Do you know what I want more than anything else right now? I'm afraid to even think about it, Manuel joked. This, she leaned forward and touched his lips with hers. Manuel didn't respond to the kiss, but he didn't push away either, sitting there as if waiting to see what would happen next. What are you doing, silly? Sylvia thought, horrified by her actions somewhere deep in her subconscious. What are you doing? He's a bum, he lives in a dump. You'll regret it tomorrow. But this bum smelled so good, like menthol shower gel, minty toothpaste, and shampoo, and she wanted to run her fingers through his wavy hair and find out if it was silky or stiff. Manuel's lips finally moved in response to her kiss, and Sylvia forgot about everything in the world. She was falling into the abyss, and her heart sank with wild, delirious pleasure. Sylvia had forgotten that she had to go to work on Monday and hadn't even set her alarm clock. When she woke up in the morning, she glanced at her watch and gasped, Oh, my goodness, she was late. Then she looked at the other half of the bed and groaned even louder. Oh, Lord, what had she done? Manuel was still asleep. His hair was tangled and falling over his face, but a happy and carefree smile was playing on his lips. I slept with a bum. Damn. I slept with a bum, Sylvia said to herself several times, refusing to believe what was happening. It was a nightmare, a horror, a disaster. Esteban would be shocked to know how low she had fallen. Memories of Esteban pierced her with burning pain. But there were no regrets, only frustration, bitterness, and squeamishness at what he had done. But now she was no better than he was. It seemed that Sylvia had exceeded Esteban many times over in her desire for revenge. Manuel turned in bed, waking up, opened his eyes, and caught her confused look. Good morning, he said, smiling, and made some unconscious movement, as if he were going to hug her. Good morning, Sylvia jerked away from him fearfully, almost falling off the bed. I have to get ready for work, I'm already late. I understand, Manuel nodded and sat up on the bed, I won't take much of your time, I'll be ready in a minute. Your new clothes are on the chair in the living room, Sylvia said awkwardly, trying not to meet his gaze. There's a t-shirt and jeans, and I hope I got the right size. Thank you, Manuel said. Even if he sensed the change in her tone and mood, he didn't show it and kept calm. Sylvia slipped into the bathroom, then let Manuel take a shower while she hurriedly made coffee. No matter how ashamed she was of her own behavior, it would be rude to kick a guy out of the house without offering him a cup of coffee. Sorry, I didn't have time to make breakfast, she mumbled when Manuel appeared in the kitchen. It's okay, don't worry about it, he nodded, feeling awkward as well. They had coffee in silence. Manuel tried to catch her gaze, 
but Sylvia still stubbornly avoided looking him in the eye. Thank you again for, for everything, she finally said, trying to make it clear that the meeting was over. I'm sorry, but I really have to go. Of course, I'm leaving now. The boy got up from the table. I won't keep you any longer. Sylvia sighed with relief, and Manuel suddenly asked. Look, I'm not insisting, but if you ever need my help again. I don't need your help anymore, Sylvia interrupted him sharply. Thank you. I don't need anything from you. I got everything I wanted. And even more, he tried to make a joke, meaning that they had spent the night together. Sylvia's face changed, and an unpleasant suspicion struck her. Wait, are you saying that I have to pay you more? The smile immediately slipped off Manuel's face, his gaze became prickly and unfriendly, and his blue eyes darkened with resentment. Huzars don't take money from women, he said grimly. But seriously, Sylvia, please remember, I sleep with women free of charge, and only with the ones I like. He turned abruptly and left the kitchen, and a second later the front door slammed. Sylvia flinched at the sound as if it were a gunshot. It seemed like she'd done the right thing and said the right words. Or did this ridiculous bum really expect Sylvia to offer him to move in with her and live happily ever after? Her mind said she had done everything right, but there was a strange heaviness in her soul. And when Sylvia went out into the hallway, she found $3,000 on the shelf under the mirror. Manuel hadn't taken the money. Wow, what a proud, arrogant bum. Oh, well, that's fine. It's his decision, the girl whispered and hurried to get ready for work. The next few months passed like a fog. Sylvia couldn't even believe that all this was really happening to her. Esteban officially started the war. He didn't want a peaceful divorce. Esteban has lost his mind, Zoe told her. She was eagerly watching the twists and turns of her former classmate's scandalous divorce. Can you imagine, he told everyone that you cheated on him during all years of your marriage and that he knew and tolerated it. Isn't he a jerk? He tells it after he was literally caught red-handed. Sylvia closed her eyes tiredly, not wanting to discuss it. She had enough to worry about, the court sessions, the meticulous division of property. She literally didn't recognize Esteban. He fought for every vase and spoon, for sheets and pillowcases, even for the iron and the old microwave. Frankly speaking, Sylvia was so tired of all this dirt that at one point she wanted to give up and give him everything, absolutely everything, just so he would leave her alone. However, her lawyer urged her not to be so emotional and to use her head. You both worked, and all the property was bought with the money both he and you earned. You have the right to get half of the jointly acquired property, he told Sylvia. Why on earth would you give your husband such imperial gifts? She just wanted to drink some strong sleeping pills and fall asleep and wake up when all this nonsense was over. Eventually, the parties managed to come to an agreement. Sylvia got the house and Esteban got the summer house and the car. All the other stuff that Esteban won from her literally in a battle, including the microwave, Sylvia put in several large boxes and put them in the hallway so that her ex-husband would take them away and never bother her again. Esteban came to get the boxes, but he hesitated, staying in the hallway for a long time, probably expecting Sylvia to offer him at least a cup of tea or something else. But she was standing there with her hand on the doorknob, wishing he would just go away. Esteban asked hesitantly, So, how are you? Fine, Sylvia's lips curved into a sarcastic grin. As you can see, I'm happy to be free, enjoying life with my lover. But you already know that, I mean, you told absolutely everyone that I cheated on you from the first day of our marriage and lied to you for years. Esteban frowned and looked at her resentfully. Well, what else am I supposed to tell? Do you think it was easy for me when I saw a naked man in our bedroom? I almost died when I imagined that you and he. Well, Sylvia nodded sympathetically, then we're even. I almost died, too, when I saw the pictures from the airport where you were hugging some girl. Esteban wrinkled his nose and said casually, It's already over. It wasn't serious, Sylvia, I told you. I made a mistake. But I've already repented a hundred times, and I'm ready to redeem myself. Redeem? 
Sylvia raised her eyebrows. I wonder how. Esteban hesitated, mumbling something unintelligible, and then, finally, dared to say. So, maybe you and I should start all over again? Let's give each other a second chance. That's when Sylvia got really hysterical. She was laughing so loudly that probably all the neighbors could hear her. A second chance? Start all over again? Are you serious? First, you humiliated me, betrayed me, ruined my whole life, fought over property, and even over old curtains and pillows, and now you're talking about a second chance as if nothing had happened? I'd rather live with a dirty, stinking bum from the dump than with you. She continued to laugh. Her ex-husband was frightened by this violent reaction, and grabbing the boxes, quickly left the house. Sylvia had lied to Esteban, saying she was enjoying a happy life with her lover. She had no one, and the weirdest, most inexplicable thing was that she thought of Manuel more and more often. Sylvia thought of him with a rising sense of guilt, realizing that she had offended the guy, but not understanding exactly how. Maybe she should find him and talk to him. During the first weeks after that fateful night, she tried to avoid the very store where she'd first met Manuel. Now, on the contrary, she began to walk by, looking for the familiar face with messy blonde hair. Homeless people occasionally hung out here and there, but there was no man well among them. Sylvia didn't dare to ask them about their comrade. She wanted to see him in person. She didn't really know what she would say to him if she did meet him. Hey, you forgot to take the money for the job? It was obvious that he deliberately didn't take it. Sylvia looked hopefully into the face of every homeless man she met. Gosh, she didn't realize there were so many homeless people in the city. What did Manuel say? Everyone had their own destiny and their own path that led them to the streets. Hope was fading with each passing day. Sylvia thought with fear, what if Manuel already died? The life of homeless people is short. Some of them drank themselves to death, some of them froze in the cold, some of them went to jail, and some of them died of some disease. Sylvia, are you crazy? He is a dirty bum. Why do you even need it? Sylvia reminded herself. If you want to find a man that much, look for someone in a decent society, in theaters, in museums, at concerts, after all. Even registering on a dating website is better than desperately looking for a homeless man day and night. Still, she couldn't help herself. One day Zoe stopped by to see her. After Sylvia's divorce, they started to communicate more often, even though they weren't close friends in high school. So, how's it going? Zoe looked at her former classmate with an understanding gaze. Sylvia shrugged her shoulders uncertainly. I see. Let's bring you back to life, Zoe promised mysteriously and handed her a bag from the supermarket with bottles clinking promisingly. What's this? Sylvia asked cautiously. Champagne. I took a couple of bottles so that I wouldn't have to go to the store again. Let's celebrate your freedom. Sylvia felt like she was having deja vu champagne. We'll celebrate your freedom. Manuel. Why did I bring you home that day? When are you going to get out of my mind and out of my heart? Zoe quickly set the table in the living room, sliced the cheese, washed the fruit, and put the strawberries nicely in a bowl. Come on, tell me, what's bothering you? She demanded after the first drink. Still suffering because of your divorce? Sylvia's eyes widened. What? I've forgotten all about him. I don't care about Esteban anymore. That's the right thing to do, Zoe nodded cheerfully. Esteban is a total jerk. By the way, do you know that he broke up with that beautiful oriental girl and lives alone? You know, honestly, I don't care. Sylvia shrugged her shoulders indifferently. I'm not interested in his life anymore. There's something wrong with you, Zoe stared at her suspiciously, like a prosecutor. If you're not interested in Esteban anymore, why are you as gloomy as if you'd eaten a pound of lemons? Well, the thing is, Sylvia dared to confess, there is one person. Aha, the former classmate perked up. I knew there was a man involved. Come on, tell me. Sylvia didn't dare to tell her the whole truth. 
She said that she met a guy on the street and offered to pretend to be her lover. Then they spent the night together. She does not know how it happened. And then the next morning, he felt offended and left. Wow. I didn't expect that from you. Zoe said with a laugh, her eyes glistening with admiration. So my most shy and quiet classmate slept with a stranger. Well, I hope that at least he was handsome. Sylvia remembered the piercing blue eyes, the white smile, the bushy blonde hair, and sighed softly. He was very handsome. Wow, your life is more interesting than I thought. But I don't get it. What's the problem? Find him, apologize, and tell him you didn't mean to hurt him. Sylvia said miserably. How can I find him? I don't even have his phone number or address. Come on, this is the age of social media. Nowadays you can even find a needle in a haystack, Zoe said confidently and took out her smartphone. Well, let's try to find your lover. What's his last name? I don't know, Sylvia said hopelessly. What do you mean, you don't know? Zoe was puzzled. You don't even know his last name? You didn't even ask him to show his ID? No, Sylvia realized how stupid it seemed and felt terrible. I don't know how it happened. He had such a kind face and such honest eyes. The most honest eyes are usually those of maniacs and liars, Zoe said philosophically, but she turned sad, too. Well, that's a problem. How are we going to find him now? Have you tried going to the place where you met him? I hang around there every day, but he doesn't show up, Sylvia sobbed, feeling miserably unhappy. Calm down, Zoe told her and poured her another glass of champagne. We'll find him, I promise. To distract and cheer Sylvia up a little, she clicked the remote control of the TV, and the screen immediately burst with the passion of some historical melodrama. Look at this passionate love, Zoe sighed dreamily. Oh, why wasn't I born in the 19th century in some royal family? What lovely ladies. The dresses are unbelievable. And what handsome gentlemen. What a style. There are no men like that nowadays. Sylvia turned her gaze back to the TV set and suddenly hiccuped in surprise. Manuel was looking at her from the screen. She blinked a few times, thinking she was hallucinating, but he didn't disappear. An actor who looked exactly like Manuel was now dancing a waltz at a ball with some gorgeous girl. You are a wonderful dancer, Lieutenant, his partner murmured from the screen. Manuel's twin bowed his head respectfully. You flatter me, Princess. Oh, Lord, and his voice. The voice was the same, too. Sylvia could not mistake those low, velvety intonations. Could it really be him? But how? It's impossible. This is a handsome and probably insanely rich actor, and Manuel is just a bum. Hey, Sylvia, are you okay? Zoe touched her shoulder worriedly. You look like you've seen a ghost. What's that movie? Sylvia suddenly said in a hoarse voice. Zoe pressed the remote control button. The name of the movie is The Sadness of the Past Days. Grabbing her phone, Sylvia quickly typed the name of the movie into the search bar, and in a moment she was reading the list of artists involved in the project, Alejandro Rodriguez, Marta Santas, Manuel Castro. Her fingers trembled. Sylvia almost dropped her smartphone. Manuel. There was no doubt it was him. But how? She didn't understand anything anymore. What's wrong? A worried Zoe looked over her shoulder, trying to find out what she was trying to find on the internet so desperately. Sylvia had already typed in the name of her homeless lover and was now eagerly studying the information about him. Manuel Castro, 27 years old, single, graduated from the School of Theater, now works at the drama theater and occasionally appears in movies. Why are you looking at this handsome guy all of a sudden? Zoe giggled. Well, he is definitely attractive, but... It's him, Sylvia exhaled with crazy eyes and a happy smile on her lips. Who? My man Will. Zoe didn't get the meaning of the words, and when she realized it, she almost fell off the couch. No way. 
Are you trying to say that you spend the night with that actor? You're lying. I swear, Zoe, it's really him. I couldn't believe it myself at first, but his face, his voice, his name, Sylvia murmured excitedly. He turned out to be a theater and movie actor. Wow. You never cease to amaze me. Zoe shrieked in frantic admiration. Look how lucky you are, eh? Not just a handsome man, but a movie star. But the stars in Sylvia's eyes suddenly faded. Yeah, he is a movie star, and I'm... I think he doesn't even remember me anymore. Stop this melancholy. Zoe said in a commanding manner. Five minutes ago you were complaining that you couldn't find your mysterious stranger and didn't even know his last name. Now that you know who he is, you are halfway there. But who will let me talk to the actor? Sylvia hesitated. It's probably impossible to get on the set. And I still have no idea where he lives. What about the theater? Zoe reminded her. You said something about the theater. Sylvia's eyes brightened again. Yes, right, he's in the drama theater. I should check the theater's schedule and find out when I can see Manuel. And then buy a ticket to the performance and give him flowers at the end of the show, Zoe said happily. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to die of excitement. It's so romantic, just like in the movies. Still, Sylvia decided to talk to the company of bums Manuel was hanging out with a few months ago. She really wanted to find out why the movie star was in their company and what he was doing among the homeless people. But the bums didn't recognize her. They saw too many passers-by every day. But they were happy to talk to her and answer her questions. Do you remember there was a young man with you, Manuel? She asked. They looked at each other, shrugging their shoulders in puzzlement. Manuel, Manuel. Are you talking about Manuel? Someone suddenly realized. Yes, Manuel. Sylvia said happily. I haven't seen him lately. Where did he go? He's not one of us. They told her he's a stranger, an outsider. We don't know where he came from. He just showed up and then vanished. He hung out with us for about a week and then disappeared. He never even slept here, disappeared somewhere, and said he had a place to sleep. So he didn't tell you much about himself? No, but he asked about our everyday life in detail, how we ended up on the street, what we ate, how we earned money for food, whether we had families. In other words, he was very interested in our life. I didn't like it right away. He was very suspicious. Thank you, Sylvia said reflectively. You've been very helpful. In fact, a lot of things became clear to her. It turned out that Manuel was currently working on a show about the life of the homeless, big city tramps. Probably he wanted to experience the life of the homeless this way, to understand them better, to become one of them. Sylvia bought a ticket and on the appointed day, dressed up and went to the theater in excitement. But it seemed to her that she was not going to the theater, but to a real date with her, with her homeless lover. It turned out that the play was very popular. There were no empty seats in the theater. Most of the people came with flowers. As it turned out, Manuel was quite a famous young actor. It was just that Sylvia wasn't very interested in modern cinematography. It was quite obvious that many women came to the theater solely to see him. They greeted every appearance of the artist on stage with enthusiastic squeals and applause. Sylvia silently watched the play forgetting how to breathe because of excitement. She was captivated by the play and the actor's performance. Manuel was really talented. He really looked and behaved like a real bum. He didn't just play a bum, he actually became a bum. But at some point Sylvia felt scared because he was a celebrity and she thought she was just a loser. She must have looked ridiculous in his eyes when she rebuked him for living like a bum, when she acted arrogant and thought she was better than him. Maybe Manuel wouldn't even want to look at her now. During the intermission, to calm down, Sylvia got herself some champagne and grinned involuntarily. Now this drink was associated only with Manuel. Out of the corner of her ear, she heard two young female fans talking. They were eagerly discussing the play, or rather, not the play itself, but the actor playing the leading role. What do you think of Castro? 
He's incredible, isn't he? One of them said excitedly. Yes, he is nice. The second one replied with a smile. His charisma is so powerful. He's just like Apollo. He looks sexy even in those ridiculous rags. So sexy that I want to hug and kiss him. Yeah, if he would just look at me, I would follow him to the end of the world, the first girl said dreamily. I think any girl would follow him to the end of the world, and even farther. Her friend laughed. Look how many fans came. They will probably be waiting for him at the staff entrance after the play to get an autograph and take a picture with him. Sylvia began to listen more attentively. The staff entrance? Where is it? Do you know anything about his personal life? Manuel's fans continued their conversation. Yeah, the mass media said that his girlfriend, that actress, I don't remember her name, she broke up with and started dating some rich filmmaker. She is so stupid. She lost the perfect guy. Sylvia thought back to the moment when she asked Manuel about his girlfriend and he said that he had a girlfriend, but now he didn't want to talk about it. So that's what this is all about. The girls, continuing their lively conversation, left the cafeteria. The second bell rang. Sylvia finished her champagne and hurried into the hall so as not to miss the beginning of the second act. At the end of the play, the actors were literally bombarded with flowers. Naturally, Manuel received more bouquets than anyone else. Sylvia stood aside for a long time, hesitant to approach him and give him the roses. But then, scolding herself that it was stupid to give up when she was just a couple of meters away from the love of her life, she walked over to Manuel. Smiling, bowing, and pressing his hand to his heart, Manuel walked to the edge of the stage to take another bouquet and met Sylvia's eyes. She felt as if she had been struck by an electrical current. She had already forgotten how amazing his eyes were, so beautiful, so piercingly blue. Manuel recognized her at once, no doubt he did, even though he hadn't seen her in months. His eyebrows raised, and his eyes turned wide, but he quickly got over his surprise and gratefully accepted the flowers from Sylvia. Their fingers met for a second, and she was struck with another jolt of electricity. She stood near the stage and looked at Manuel, but he took the bouquet, stepped away from the edge, and soon disappeared backstage with the rest of the cast. The audience began to leave. The hall gradually became empty, and Sylvia still stood in front of the stage and stared at it not knowing what to do now. Well, she gave him the flowers, Manuel saw her and recognized her. And that's it? On the other hand, what did she expect? That Manuel would take her in his arms and propose to her? He took the roses, so he accepted her apology and was no longer angry. It's done, she can leave. Leave? No way. Sylvia suddenly got angry. No, he wouldn't dare ignore her. She should meet him and talk to him properly. The voices of the fans from the cafeteria rang in her head. After the show, the fans would wait for him near the staff entrance. Sylvia shook her hair decisively. She may look like a stupid fan, but she'll wait for Manuel at any cost and talk to him. There were a lot of people at the staff entrance. Sylvia felt like the black sheep among a crowd of young, brisk fans. They definitely knew each other and looked warily at the stranger. One by one, the artists came out of the staff entrance, but Manuel was not among them. Sylvia felt more and more uncomfortable. Why did she even think he would want to talk to her? He's a celebrity, and there are plenty of people like her, crowding around, trying to get their idol's attention. When Manuel finally came out of the door, the crowd got excited and rushed to meet him. Cameras flashed, there was a joyful chirp, excited exclamations, and rustling of autograph pads. Sylvia was numb, not daring to move and approach Manuel. It was as if her legs had collapsed. At that time, he easily pushed the crowd apart and stepped forward, looking for someone with his eyes. She guessed who he was looking for, but she was afraid to believe it. Hi, she sank into the familiar, gentle voice again. Sylvia suddenly felt like a silly schoolgirl who had fallen in love, and she looked up at Manuel timidly. He was so handsome. Hi, she whispered in a suddenly changed voice. I wanted to thank you for the wonderful performance. You were great. 
Thank you, too. Manuel was silent too, obviously struggling to find the right words. I didn't expect you to find me. It was an accident. I've been looking for you for a very long time, but not in the right place, she grinned. I'm afraid to even think about where you tried to look for me. Judging by the way you treated me. What else could I think? Sylvia shrugged helplessly. You didn't even try to dissuade me. All right, Manuel said, glancing at the girls who were listening to their conversation with curiosity. So why were you looking for me? Do you have some work for me again? Sylvia smiled. Well, if you're up for it, I have the right role for you. And who do I have to play this time? He asked in the same tone. Your beloved dirty bum? Sylvia touched his face gently, running down from his cheek to his chin. No, not a bum, she said. Play the role of my beloved husband. Well, if you don't mind getting married to me. Me? Get married? Manuel smiled and winked at Sylvia. Wait about five minutes. I'll sign autographs and take some pictures with my fans, and then... Then what? The girl wheezed. Sylvia's throat was dry. Then I'll marry you. I accept your proposal. Manuel smiled once again and went to the fans, who immediately surrounded him. Sylvia looked at her beloved and tears rolled down her cheeks. She had finally found him. She had been looking for him for a long time, but she had found him and would never let him go again so she could make Manuel the happiest husband in the world. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.